Ingolf Burkhardt is one of the most experienced and sought after jazz and lead trumpet players in Europe today. Primarily self-taught until he enrolled at the Cologne University of Music in 1985, he was asked to join the North German Radio Big Band shortly after graduation. As a member of this full-time European radio jazz orchestra, he has performed and recorded with such luminaries as Joe Pass, Jimmy Smith, Wayne Shorter, Al Jarreau, and Bobby McFerrin. He has fronted bands with his mentor, the great Bobby Shue, and toured extensively worldwide. Ingolf is also a member of Alan Skidmore's Afro-British band Ubizo and a seasoned masterclass clinician. He was professor of trumpet at the Music Conservatory in Hamburg from 2000 to 2008 and is in high demand as a studio musician, recording with his horn section, the Matterhorns. He has released four solo CDs to date and his present project, Jazul, is groove-based and features Ingolf with one of the top pop rhythm sections in Germany. Ingolf Burkhardt is one of the most versatile and talented trumpet players of his generation. We are proud to welcome him to Masters of Brass. What, what, what do you find special about classical players? What, what amazes you about them? Oh, is there something that amazes you? Just what, uh, well, it's, What's so it's, special about it? Well, um, control, control of sound, uh, which we need as well, you know, uh, don't get me wrong. But uh, it's, it's, it's a very crucial thing, is control, um, uh, this, the culture of sound, which is very different to, to our way of playing, of course. Um, you know, um, pretty much the, 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 you know, the balls it takes to, 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 to go out there and, and having to play solo without cracking a note, you know, I mean, the nerves, you know, I mean, that's, that's, very, that's very impressive uh, to actually, I mean, we, we, we have a completely different approach. I mean, you, you can be nervous before you have to play solo. Uh, but you still play your own stuff in a way, you know. Or of course, there's some written stuff as well. But you know, it's much more forgiving. With Bobby as a trumpet teacher, which was fantastic because we had two weeks of Bobby, and uh, that's and that I can say really changed my life as a trumpet player, and uh, it changed my attitude towards playing and the the formerly mentioned goals of being like a studio player. Also, that had changed. I, I still wanted to do that, but i I learned very quickly that um, that wasn't all, you know, that was more to, mm -hmm. to life than being a studio player or, or like a player who's just in the section and, you know, mm -hmm. I, I wanted more. After I met Bobby, he, he changed it all around. For lead playing, you know, I, I use a different equipment, first of all, I use a different mouthpiece that enables me to, to hit those high notes easier. Um, uh, and uh, I, I would, you know, I have some small exercises that I would do, like like uh, some slurs, you know, just just to get used to the pressure. What do you need from uh, the trumpet section when you're playing lead? Well, you need you need <laughs> you need a lot of support. My sound doesn't go like wow like this, you know. I'm more like this, you know. So I need you know. Obviously, I want I don't want the section to outplay me. Uh, but I need a lot of support from, especially from the second trumpet, you know. And the problem with second trumpet players can be sometimes they're also lead players, and then they try to give you one and, and outplay you, you know. Uh, costs a thousand dollars. I'll find him. <laughs> okay. Okay, where we're talking about this, let's move on to breathing. For example, in uh, playing lead trumpet, what mm -hmm. what what goes on? Mm -hmm. what, is your diaphragm important? Tell us tell us what you're thinking about, or what you've what's be, what have become your habits that really work. Well, as as a basically self-taught person, I have uh, in my early days never thought about what what to do. I, I mean, I, I never thought about what I did. To put it that way. The thing with, with that breathing system is uh, it's it's not it's different from the from the conventional way of breathing down here you know the lower part of the lungs gets filled with air you know uh, in the area of your stomach uh, the difference is uh, that you use the whole your whole lung capacity and it's based on a, on a yoga breath uh, yoga a uh, way of yoga breathing um, which is called the complete the yoga breath 
in, in the original version. Um, it's basically like not you should not use only the, the lower part of your lungs, but also the upper part of your lungs. And uh, that's achieved with a certain movement. And um, <clears throat> um, and it moves the whole, the center of, the center of, of uh, compression uh, moves slightly up into an area around your navel, you know, the navel mm -hmm. area, uh, instead of being down there, you know, where the her where, and some people de develop a hernia, you know, and, and uh, when, they, when, they, when they push too hard, you know, and they, uh, which is extremely painful, and this cannot happen if you breathe that way. So um, it's basically Bobby Shue's method uh, that he taught me, and he allowed me a long time ago to, to actually teach it on to students. Um, he calls it the wedge. <laughs> the wedge. The mm -hmm. wedge. Um, but it's not only good for lead playing. It's I use it. But it's the only system I ever use. I mean, I use it on a flugel ballad as well, you know, to keep that note a bit longer, to play that extra eight bars on a solo, you know, or on a phrase that I that I want to play, you know. I just never run out of air. You know? Could you imagine someone doing both, breathing conventionally and and this in a in a mixed yeah. fashion? Yeah. yeah, yeah. I mean, there's 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 some some guys um, uh, that that others than me do classical work besides the the jazz thing they do or the big band things they do so obviously if they some some guys even told me if they uh, have to play like a piccolo concerto you know um, some Bach stuff for example they would even use that breathing you know because on piccolo you know and playing high um, I, I've never tried it out so it's, it's, it's I was told um, it works for them um, whereas um, you know, when they have to play like a regular, you know, symphony or like chamber music, uh, that would be too much for them, that way of breathing. So they, they would use their regular, you know, way or they have to come in on a, on a, on a high A very softly, you know. Then, then this, this, I mean, this old-fashioned or, or no, old-fashioned is the wrong expression, that the conventional way of breathing would, would be the right thing to do. Okay. I mean, it's, it's not there for nothing. People have thought about something when they yeah. created that, you know. Yeah.